Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Before we play the following interview, we want to say that this interview was recorded before we received word that the city of Baltimore, very possibly in collusion with the U.S. bishops, likely violated our First Amendment rights and canceled our contract at the hosting facility for our Bishop's Enough is Enough rally scheduled for November. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to today's Vortex with a little conversation between Patrick Coffin and I about what the heck is going on with the hierarchy. Patrick, how are you? Hi, Michael. It, it just never ends. Uh, it, it's, it makes you ask yourself, how bad would it have to get to energize more pew-sitting Catholics to see the problem hiding in plain sight? Yeah, I mean, if you were to finger, fingerprint, if you were to point, put your finger on what the problem is, and there are many, but which is sort of, what's the driving problem here with the hierarchy in the U.S., in your opinion? I think it's an identity crisis among the bishops. They don't see themselves as truly these, the uh, successors of the apostles tied organically and sacramentally to our Lord Jesus Christ. I think they've, they're trained on a European model of Romanita, which is diplomacy, smooth things over. It's a very effeminate uh, model of leadership. They literally call their training to become a bishop, baby bishop school. Yeah. Okay, I mean, can you infantilize your office more than calling it baby bishop school? I think bishops are, are formed and shaped according to a dialogue only um, model. You see this a lot with bishops who take a, a placement in a different diocese. They say when they're asked by an, an invariable uh, press conference, so what are your goals here? What are, you, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, you know, I really want to listen. It's almost a cliche. Yeah, okay, well, good. Bishops um, should listen. But bishops are also chiefly evangelists. They should be throwing down with the uncomfortable truths and the comforting truths of the Catholic faith. That's, I mean... It's like Father James Altman says, you only had one job. Um, yeah. And when bishops don't use the tools that our Lord gives them through the sacramental grace of the church and the treasury of merit, they become rationalist bureaucrats with democratic talking points. And they they run their dioceses like uh, CEOs or, or regional managers. And there's just not that fire to right wrongs. There's not that passion to uh, talk about things that last the power of baptism, repentance from sin, describing sin as it really is, not kowtowing to, to the uh, the pressures of political correctness. Uh, this is why the, the best among us, Michael, I know you know this, are the censored ones. So look for the ones that, that have the cancel targets because yeah. they're almost always the voices of truth. Yeah, it's true. That's very true. You have a uh, uh, one of the uh, spots for, I believe it's eight minutes or nine minutes or whatever that we have in Baltimore. Uh, at the uh, Enough is Enough rally, Bishop's right. Enough is Enough rally, and you enthusiastically accepted to speak. You know, there's a bunch of people there, and I, you know, at the time we're doing this recording, we've sold about 2,000 of the 3,000 available seats in a very, very narrow window. I don't think we've only been advertising it for about two and a half weeks. Uh, so we're pretty darn sure that uh, if all things go according to plan, we'll have a sold out audience there. And if you have to give a message, because those 3,000 people and us and everybody else, the speakers, you, me, everyone, are coming to say, uh, you know, bishops, you need to be bishops. So what's your message to the crowd? Uh, a quick sum. Don't give away your whole talk, but, uh, you know, what, what, what do you want to say to 3,000 Catholics? And then by extension, I'm sure the secular press will be there, Washington Post will be there, all of that business. What do you want the world to hear from you about the U.S. bishops? In a nutshell, Michael, one of the things I intend to say is that for the last 60 years, the Catholic hierarchy has been trumpeting the role of the lady. We all hear about the lay apostolate and lay, lay, the lay people are so indispensable to, uh, to, to and for the church. Well, now the baptized lady are waking up to all of, and it's not just human, human imperfections. The church has always been led by sinners. Now we're talking about a systemic pattern of covering up for homosexual predators who've destroyed countless lives. And according to Canon 212.2, the lay baptized have a right and duty to speak up and present their concerns and their opinions to the pastors. Uh, Catholics are fed up beyond, I mean, there's you, you run out of ways to describe how exhausting it is keeping up with how, uh, as George Neumeier says, 
Uncle Ted McCarrick might be gone, but his nephews are still running the store. Yeah. And so uh, there are many things that Catholics can do, and, and not just pray. I mean, let's emphasize the first necessary thing is prayer. Yes, you have to double and triple down on your friendship with Jesus Christ. But that might be necessary, but it's not sufficient. Right. We also have to communicate our concerns and, and let let righteous anger flow. Anger is uh, has been given a bad rap. We're all afraid to be angry. We forget about our Lord in the temple. Uh, we forget about uh, the teaching of Thomas Aquinas on on anger as a way to to uh, to rid evils uh, of their of their grip. And no one's gonna don't look over your shoulder for who the backup is. You're the backup. So if you can come to Baltimore or or I'm sure there's going to be a way to consume it, uh, sure. do so. I think your biggest complaint, Mike, is is uh, this the limit to the size of the venue. This is definitely going to going to sell out, and I do hope the secular press goes there. Um, this is part of a lot of Catholics' red pill journey is that we were trained, let's say before 2002, before the spotlight, before Boston Globe, before the Dallas Charter, to think of the secular press as our enemy. Ooh, that's they're mean. That's the New York Times. They hate the Catholic Church. Surely when they describe the evil uh, deeds of a priest or a bishop, they're just exercising their anti-Catholic bigotry. Well, our so-called enemies have done us a big favor in exposing things that Catholic journalists didn't have the stomach to even look at, let alone cover. Right. Well said, Patrick. We're going to see you in Baltimore November 16th. Uh, and again, to your point, we have plans as of right now. We're recording this in August, but pretty sure we're going to have everything live streaming and all of that. Those are our plans. We'll get all that word out. Got to fill up the venue first, pretty close, uh, and then we'll turn to all the whole live streaming thing. But uh, uh, we're happy to have you on stage and telling everybody, look, do what we have to do. We are Catholics. We believe this one true faith, and it is the one true faith. And everything we need to do, as Bishop Sheen said, remind your bishops to be bishops. Patrick, thanks very much for joining us, brother. God bless. It's an honor. You too, Mike. Take care.